Uh, so I thought we would start with our opening statements. Uh, in September 2010, the People's Republic of China shocked the world by halting critical rare earth mineral exports in retaliation to a territorial dispute with Japan in the East China Sea. The Chinese action sent a clear and unmistakable message to Japan and the rest of the world. China is willing to use economic tools to achieve diplomatic goals. Two months later, when the export ban was lifted, the price of cerium soared from approximately $5 per kilogram before the ban to $67 per kilogram after the ban. The price of neodymium went from $42 per kilo in April 2010 to $140 per kilo three months after the ban, and the price of dysprosium nearly doubled from 250 per kilo to 400 per kilo uh, in January of 2011. Today's hearing about rare earth minerals is both timely and important given the role that these elements play in America's manufacturing and defense industrial base. Rare earths are vital in a variety of manufactured goods such as fluorescent lights, hybrid engines, wind turbines, uh, cell phones, uh, and neodymium iron boron permanent magnets used in defense systems. China's actions against Japan fundamentally transformed the rare earths market for the worse. As a result, manufacturers can no longer expect a steady supply of these elements, and the pricing uncertainty created by this action threatens tens of thousands of American jobs. For Americans' defense industry, a total reliance on China for rare earths represents a serious weakness for national security. China currently controls 97 percent of the world's rare earth production, including all stages of the supply chain for permanent magnets. China's ability to dictate market terms to the rest of the world is particularly worrisome given its unwillingness to follow established international trade rules. To make matters worse, China is determined to retain much of the rare earth minerals it produces to meet growing domestic demand. Thus, American manufacturers are locked into a non-win scenario where the world's sole supplier of rare earths is tightly controlling global supply. In fact, domestic Chinese demand is projected to consume nearly all the rare earth minerals that country produces, leaving nothing for export markets. From the 1960s to the 1980s, the U.S. was the global leader in production, research, development, and fabrication of rare earth elements and magnets. During this period, however, Chinese leaders strategically targeted the rare earth industry for export to China. They succeeded. By using a combination of low labor cost and non-existent environmental standards, China gradually transferred the entire American rare earth industry overseas. In 2002, the sole remaining American producer of neodymium iron boron magnets, MagnaQuench, located in Indiana, was sold to the Chinese with full approval from the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. That was the last act of the American tragedy. Subsequent to that, I authored a change in the bill um, that provides whenever a uh, state-owned enterprise buys uh, American company of significance that it has to be elevated to the highest level at the CFIUS review as opposed to being done at the lowest level. So this is where we are today. Uh, the, this crucial American intellectual property was forever transferred to China. Were not for entrepreneurs like Molly Corps, we would never end our dependence on China for rare earths. That's why we're having this hearing today. After China's two-month rare earth mineral export embargo concluded in November of 2010, the market price of certain rare earths, particularly cerium, neodymium, and dysprosium, soared to new highs. Currently, the prices for these elements are at astronomical levels, in some cases 650 percent over the pre-export ban prices. As a result of this unprecedented supply disruption, the Japanese manufacturing industry implemented efforts to stockpile rare earths and to begin development of alternative technologies. In the U.S., however, there is barely any awareness of the seriousness of this crisis. But to their credit, the Department of Energy under ARPA-E program is conducting cutting-edge research into rare earth alternatives. Unfortunately, the scope of this crisis is enormous and only a concerted national effort will lead us out of this mess. The 16th District of Illinois, 
which I had the honor of representing, depends heavily on manufacturing for its livelihood. Manufacturing accounts for approximately 25 percent of the local economy, or double the national average. In fact, in just three counties comprising less than 300,000 people, we have exports in excess of $3.2 billion a year. Manufacturers in Illinois and nationwide are extremely concerned about China's monopoly on rare earths, and we need to heed their urgent call to action. And thus, we call upon the administration to work with Congress to formulate a coherent, common sense approach to ending China's monopoly on rare earths. It's not a Republican or Democratic issue, it's an American issue that requires bipartisan leadership. I've met at length with industry representatives and officials from the Departments of Energy and State to try to gain a better understanding of the magnitude of this crisis. I co-sponsored co legislation authored by Representative Mike Kaufman of Colorado to streamline the process for domestic rare earth production, and I recently urged U.S. Trade Rep. Ron Kirk to take action to the World Trade Organization against China's unfair export practices. Uh, before I recognize my good friend, the ranking member, for his opening statement, I want to acknowledge the presence of Ch uh, Chairman Jerry Lewis, uh, who is the member of Congress that represents Molly Corps Mine in California. Uh, Chairman Lewis is here to introduce Mr. Smith. Uh, I intend to recognize the ranking member for his opening statement, then allow Chairman Lewis to introduce Mr. Smith. Uh, and so I now recognize uh, ranking member Chairman Eni Falamavega. Mr. Chairman, thank you for calling this hearing, and I too would like to personally welcome our colleague to the before our sub.